Good evening, everyone. Meteorologist Marcus Beasley here, and I'm out here at the Marcus Community Fair. I know Marcus and Marcus, kind of cool, huh? We're seeing some rides over here, people walking around, riding some rides, getting some funnel cakes, checking out the barns behind me. It's a hot one out here, though. We're seeing temperatures in the 80s, very humid and sticky here in Marcus. We're seeing 87 degrees in Sioux City right now, 88 in Cherokee. We're seeing 82 in Orange City, 88 there in uh, Yankton. Mostly sunny skies, a few clouds out here, but it doesn't look like it's too bad, just hot and sunny. I'll have more details on what we can expect for the days coming up here in the 9 on 9 forecast. KCAU 9 News at 5 starts right now. We are Siouxland Proud. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us on your Thursday. I'm Sophie Erber. An individual at Morningside STEM Elementary School tonight has tested positive for COVID-19. Now, all close contacts are being advised to isolate themselves for two weeks. And it's our top story at 5. According to statements from the school district, the Siouxland District Health Department has completed contact tracing in all close contacts of that person with COVID-19 have since been notified. They are also being asked to self-quarantine. It has not yet been released whether or not the person who tested positive is a student or a faculty member. Also, according to that statement, all impacted areas on campus have been sanitized. Summer school classes will continue for children not identified as close contacts. And this morning marked the first day of school for elementary and middle schoolers in the South Sioux City Community School District. Dakota County is at moderate risk level for COVID-19, which means classes today were in person for the kids and masks are mandatory. School administrators say they were surprised at how many students came in today with their own individualized masks. So excited to have our South Sioux City students back. We've missed them. We've missed our families. And um, today is just such an exciting day. Uh, I know our smiles might be covered, but they are there, and we're smiling with our eyes. So um, it's, it's just great, and it's why we do what we do, and uh, we couldn't be more thrilled. When kids move from bathrooms to classrooms and lunchroom, they are asked to keep their arms spread out to enforce social distancing guidelines. And every year, there are some new teachers joining every school district across Siouxland. But this year, those first-time educators are starting off their careers during a pandemic. KCAU 9 news reporter Marina Bach introduces us to two first-year teachers in the South Sioux City Community School District. Tim and Sophie, I spoke with a preschool teacher as well as an elementary school teacher. Both of them are recent graduates, fresh out of school, starting their careers right in the middle of a pandemic. They shared with me some of their concerns as well as how they're adjusting to the return to learn plans. Who would have ever thought <laughs> that my first year would look something like this? No amount of college textbooks could help prepare Morgan Knuppel for what's to come this school year. I'm excited for the kids to get here. I'm excited to get into that routine and get my teaching career started. Um, but like I said, there is kind of that unknown, but we'll get through it together. Knuppel will have 26 pupils inside her classroom. She's been aligning her curriculum with the South Sioux City Community School District's Return to Learn plans. We will be having um, a little bit smaller class sizes. We'll have AM and PM sessions. Um, and then we'll also try to limit um, movement throughout the building. We'll have a breakfast and sack lunch in our rooms this year to kind of limit that movement. Down the road from the preschool building, first year teacher Kaylee Casey is welcoming 17 students into her classroom. It's not at all what I expected um, for my first year. We are taking a lot of hand washing breaks and we will not have any sort of physical touch with each other. We're going to clean our desks very frequently so that will be new for the kids. She says the use of technology will be at the center of her daily lessons. It's a measure to help prepare students for any curveball the new school year may bring. We're implementing Google Classroom right away in the event of a shutdown. Teachers tell us they're strengthening their classroom plans as well as their mindsets. To not only stay positive for myself but to stay positive for my kids because this is a really hard year for everyone and I think that is the best thing I can do. Classes did begin for kindergarten through sixth grade as well as ninth graders here at the South Sioux City School District. The remainder of the students will begin on Friday. Again, any student staff coming into a school building will be required to wear masks as well as follow social distancing guidelines. In South Sioux City, Marina Bach, KCAU 9 News. 
And now for a quick look at the latest COVID-19 numbers across Siouxland, with Barry County Health officials reporting 16 additional COVID-19 cases. That is from a total of 151 new tests. In Nebraska, Dakota County officials reporting tonight just two additional cases of the virus and one new case confirmed in Thurston County. And from South Dakota, Clay County has 19 currently active cases, while Lincoln County has 94 active cases. Vice President Mike Pence is in Iowa today, landing in Des Moines on Air Force Two. This afternoon, Pence spoke at the Iowa State Fairgrounds to launch the Farmers and Ranchers for Trump Coalition. He says the Trump administration will, quote, continue to fight to expand ethanol as part of America's vital energy industry. We're securing our nation's future through energy independence and American energy dominance. The truth is, under this president's leadership, we're setting records every day. And with the strong leadership of Senator Joni Ernst, and with the strong and principled and unwavering conservative leadership of Senator Chuck Grassley, this president announced an agreement on renewable fuel standards that ensures a 15 billion gallon ethanol will be blended into the fuel supply in 2020. Now, several Iowa agricultural groups recently penned a letter to Pence today saying President Trump's Environmental Protection Agency has already undermined the renewable fuel standard, killing demand, they say, for more than 4 billion gallons of homegrown biofuels. If you'd like, you can read the full letter because it's on our website right now. That is SiouxlandProud.com, where you could check out the KCAU 9 News app. Turning to the debate now over mail-in voting, Governor Pete Ricketts in Nebraska saying he does not have any concerns about the post office's ability to deliver those mail-in ballots. I certainly can't address other states. Uh, I can tell you here in Nebraska, the Secretary of State is working very hard to protect the integrity of our election system. It seemed to go relatively smoothly. I did not hear any problems with the primary. I would expect the general election to look very similar. Rickett says more people might be able to vote in person in the general election that is based on the current COVID-19 situation in Nebraska. Well, some encouraging news for the economy tonight. The new jobs report shows first-time jobless claims fell below 1 million for the first time since March. The Labor Department tonight says 963,000 Americans filed unemployment benefits for the first time last week. That's the lowest number of weekly initial claims since the pandemic shut down the U.S. economy. Experts say it means people keep returning to work, so that is good news. However, the continued jobless claims number, which counts people who have filed for unemployment benefits at least two weeks in a row, remains high. That number is at 15 and a half million. With just days before the start of the new school year, Dakota Valley students and staff will now be breathing cleaner air. The district is installing more than 100 air purifiers throughout the school building. Superintendent Jerry Rasmussen says that the district looked at ways to make the school as safe as possible for in-person learning, and they decided that air purification will help protect both the students and their staff there. As we looked at what the research was saying that air purification, we would have healthier buildings. And so our students would be sick less even in a normal year. Uh, our staff also would be sick less. And so improving air quality became a high priority. Now coming up tonight at 6, KCAU 9 News reporter Lydia Vasquez explains how it works and the benefits the district says these installations will soon provide. The Sioux City School District will begin their classes on August 24th and a group of parents in support of Iowa Educators for a Safe Return to School is hosting a flash drive that is now set for Saturday. Teachers, staff, administrators and school board members are joining this event. The goal is to raise awareness of the importance of masks, social distancing and sanitization inside the classroom. Other teachers in the area are doing the same sort of event. Um, you know, I think there was one in Des Moines a few weeks ago, and we just thought that it's something our community can do in a safe and healthy environment. Everybody stays in their cars, parades through town. The drive will begin at 10 on Saturday morning at North High School. Masks and social distancing will be required at the event. Those in attendance are encouraged to decorate their cars. Sports and other extracurricular activities are often a part of a student's identity. Many students now struggling with the loss of their sport during the pandemic. We'll share how you can help coming up. And taking a live look outside now from our tower cam, Marcus comes back next with your full forecast into the weekend. Stay with us.
You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Herber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Welcome back. As we heard, the Marcus Community Fair is underway tonight, and that is where meteorologist Marcus Beasley joins us live from. How's the weather over there? It's hot out here, Sophie. We're seeing a lot of sunshine, some clouds out here, but it is extremely hot and sticky, but great fair weather. You can come out here, get some ice cream. There's a lot of things to get. Curly fries, corn dogs, funnel cakes, all the deep fried good fair food. It's out here as well as some rides for the kids and also some things to check out in the exhibits that are in the barns. Just a lot going on out here. Not too many people out here right now, but I think it's a great place to come to if you're really wanting to check out a fair because a lot of them are getting canceled this year so if you're craving that deep fried fair food this is the spot for it taking a look outside right now from the ho-chunk center in downtown sioux city we're seeing a lot of sunshine out there again we're seeing some clouds here throughout sioux land it's just very humid so some moisture in the air creating some clouds but as far as storms go i don't really expect too many of those here throughout the overnight period temperatures outside they're warm in the mid to upper 80s throughout much of the area 87 in sioux city 86 in wayne we're seeing 88 in cherokee storm lake at 86 degrees 89 in Spencer right now in 88 in Yankton. Summer's not over yet. I do think that we could see a few of those hotter, humid days return, but it looks like next week is going to be very, very pleasant. So if you have any plans for this weekend and into next week, it's going to be a great time to get outside and enjoy some really nice weather and maybe come out to the fair this weekend. Again, deep fried food, this is the place for it, and games as well. Just a lot going on out here, and I think some farm animals this weekend as well. Sophie? Thanks so much, Marcus. Enjoy your namesake fair. Well, as the demand for wedding dresses fell, a Sioux Falls tailoring business was, of course, struggling to stay afloat like so many other industries. How these owners found some success in making masks and PPE coming up. And the future of school sports and other extracurricular activities, of course, remains uncertain tonight. How to help student athletes that could be struggling with the loss of their game coming up next. She's an accomplished journalist and she is a people person. She's able to talk to folks. We need to do a great job every day and that's, that's motivating to come to work and know that people expect a certain product and, and we're there to deliver. Before we wrap up at five, let's check in with Tim for What's Ahead at Six. He's in the newsroom for us. Hi, Tim. Hey, good afternoon. How about Marcus being able to get out and about this afternoon? Lucky guy. I guess so. <laughs> We're pinned up here inside. Well, here's a quick check of what we've got coming up at six o'clock tonight. Even before Sioux City school students return to class for the fall semester, there's been a report of a positive COVID-19 uh, COVID test inside the Sioux City Community School District. We'll tell you what's being done about that. Again, that's at six. Elsewhere tonight, folks with even the littlest bit of creativity are being invited to join in on a new project at the Sioux City Arts Center. It's called Cell Block Cities. You can find out why at least a thousand city blocks are up and will need to be painted. And you won't want to miss the story of a 12-year-old entrepreneur. We'll let you know what he's selling these days and why he's so successful at it. Again, that's coming up at 6. In the meantime, for those of us still in the studio, here's <laughs> Sophie again. Tim, if you could still hear me, what's your favorite fair food? Because I, now that oh. I saw him at the fair, I'm craving fried Oreos. Corn dog. It's a simple pleasure, but so <laughs> good. That does sound delicious. I can go for some yeah. sweet corn right now, too. I'm missing it this year. Mm. Maybe we'll uh, have to call him and have him bring us back some. I like that. All right. Thanks a lot, Tim. I'll yep. see you at 6. Yep. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. I know you normally expect your 9 on 9 forecast. What we can tell you is that it's a beautiful summery forecast, especially with humidity dropping off over the weekend. I'll see you back here at 6 o'clock with Tim. Until then, have a great night, everyone.